What's up guys, it's Ryan here and welcome to this super quick guide on 4-tick auto attacking. I get questions from people just about every day about 4-ticking, what is it, how do I do it, how does it work, what are the best ways to learn it, and I thought I would cover all that in this video really quick because as of a couple days ago it has been announced that 4-tick auto attacking is here to stay and it's going to be here at least for the next little while. So without further ado, let's get into it. First off, what is 4-tick auto attacking? Everything in RuneScape is measured in ticks. Each tick is 0.6 seconds. For example, the time it takes to cast one ability is 3 ticks or 1.8 seconds. This 3 tick time period is called the global cooldown. What you're doing with 4 tick auto attacking is you're taking one extra tick, so an extra 0.6 seconds, in order to get an extra auto attack. It really is as simple as that. You're weaving in autos at a very small loss of time in order to get the extra damage you get out of the auto. If what I just said sounds complicated in any way, this is an even easier way to illustrate it. If you look down at this action bar, you'll see the global cooldown. That's the clock that puts all my abilities unavailable until 1.8 seconds or 3 game ticks passes. If you picture the global cooldown like a progress bar, anytime all of my abilities are almost completely visible and not grayed out anymore, that is the point when I'm pressing an auto attack keybind and then following that up by pressing Pressing another ability. Instead of the global cooldown ending and then beginning with the next ability immediately after, there's a moment where all my abilities are available but the global cooldown hasn't quite started yet. That is the one tick or 0.6 second loss that is the cost of the auto attack that I am manually firing off. So that in essence is what 4 tick auto attacking is. It's a way to at the cost of 0.6 seconds or one game tick weave an auto attack into your ability rotation. Now, what you were looking at for this example is not proper 4-tick auto attacking, it's just an easier way to illustrate the global cooldown and how it works. To properly 4-tick auto attack, you want to make sure that every single auto attack you're using is coming from your staff. Now, before I show you guys how to 4-tick, here are some things you're going to need. You're going to need a wand, you're going to need an orb, and you're going to need a staff. Outside of that, you're going to need a good amount of runes because you're going to burn through a stupid amount just practicing this. If money's a problem, you're welcome to practice this with any kind of elemental staff, and that'll cut down significantly on the rune prices. Now that we've covered what 4-ticking is and what you need for it, let's talk about how you actually do it. Here are the six steps to the basics behind a 4-tick auto attack rotation. First off, you're going to equip your wand and your orb. You're going to use an ability with your wand and orb equipped. You're going to equip your staff. You're going to wait until your global cooldown completes its turn, and as it flashes, you're going to press your auto attack, followed by another ability. If you do this correctly, it's going to look like this. As you can see, my wand and my orb are on. I'm going to use an ability. I'm going to click on my staff to equip it. The global cooldown is about to complete, and you can tell it's completed when you see all of my abilities light up, just like you just saw there. At the time that all my abilities flash, just like what is frozen on screen right here, that is when I'm going to press my auto attack keybind and then follow that up with an ability. That is how you 4-tick auto attack. As I use a staff ability, the auto attack is going to fly out. There's not going to be an auto attack animation, which means I'm doing it properly in 4 ticks, and then you just repeat that over and over and over again. So it's an ability with your wand orb, equip your staff, auto attack, and then staff ability, right after each other with the auto attack first. So whether that sounds simple or it doesn't, a really good way to practice this is just to camp a wand orb like I was doing earlier in this video. That's going to allow you to practice the timing with the global cooldown without worrying about switching weapons. So I'm going to call that the practice rotation, and here's what it is. You've got your wand and your orb on, you're waiting until the global cooldown is just about full, you're pressing an auto attack keybind or clicking on your auto attack that is on an action bar, and then you're using an ability immediately after. If you do this correctly, it's going to look exactly like what's on screen. Every time you use an ability, a wand auto attack is going to fly out as well, and that's how you know you've got the timing down. I would strongly recommend mastering this before you work in the staff switch. The best place to work on this is at the Lumbridge Combat Academy, but you're also welcome to try this out at any monster or boss if you'd like. The last thing I'm going to cover in this video is a couple little tips and tricks that I've learned over the last couple months of Fortic Auto Attacking. The first thing I'm going to talk about is keybinds. In this video you'll see me manually clicking my wand orb in my staff switch. Although you can do this and I have done a lot of PVMing doing this, it is significantly better to have keybinds, whether that's on your keyboard or on your mouse. One other thing that I would strongly recommend doing is if you're firing your abilities with your keyboard, it can be very beneficial to put your auto attack on your mouse. It makes it a lot easier to press the auto attack and then the ability one after the other in rapid succession. So if we take a look at my Razor Synapse here, I use a Razor Naga mouse, and you're going to see my 4, 5, 7, and 8 keys are my keybinds for my 4 ticking. My 4 key puts my staff on, my 7 key puts my wand on, my 8 key puts my orb on, and my 5 key is my auto attack. Ultimately, it's up to personal preference, and I know a lot of people who prefer to put their switch on their keyboard, some like it on their mouse, some like manually clicking it, and really, it doesn't matter. It's whatever works for you. Now, when you're working on your 4 ticking, one other thing that's important to note is you cannot use an auto attack with your staff after using a channeled ability with your wand orb. The two channeled abilities you'd be using are Concentrated Blast and Asphyxiate. That doesn't mean that these abilities are not worth using, 
just be mindful that your auto attack won't fly out immediately after. So if you're using Asphyxiate, for example, you can Asphyxiate, keep your Wand Orb on, use another ability with your Wand Orb, and then auto attack the ability after. The last thing I'm gonna say before I end the guide is you can output extremely good damage per second rotations without four ticking at all. As long as you're mindful of your rotations, this is in no way something necessary. Personally, I find four ticking a lot of fun. The extra inputs make combat a lot more engaging for me, so I choose to do it, but that in no way makes this necessary by any means. I made this guide for those who might be interested in trying it or want to see if they're into it, but if this is something that isn't for you, that is completely fine and this is in no way something that people should have to do to be able to PVM effectively. So anyway guys, I hope this video helped explain some of the basics of 4 ticking. I don't want to go into actual DPS rotations with 4 ticking. If I tell you guys what rotation you should do, it's going to take a lot of fun out of the game in my opinion and I'd much rather you guys take a look at your abilities and put some thought into what rotation is going to give you the greatest damage output. So anyway guys, as always, thank you all so much for watching, have a good one, and peace out, that's it from me.